to me, every day is a battle. Like anybody else, they can go on their normal, their normal way of life. They get up, they go through their routine. My day is survive. Yeah, it's, it's heavy once you think back and you start working on yourself and think back and ask yourself, why are you the way you are? And it took me a long time to battle with that, a long time. I can say, you grow from your past. Your past is your history, your past is your story. Um, and what they go through due to addiction and all the pain and hurt, and a lot of them, it start from the family, from the family, getting, getting misused and abused. And, and you hear their story and how they deal with the shit, you know, ain't out of cars, just Man. dealing, just dealing with it, being right, being just, it's amazing, you know that. And, and they clean for 20 years. I'm clean and sober. At the core of me, I really don't want to be. But I can't get honest with another human being because what would they think of me? Because mm -hmm. I'm one year, two year, three year, whatever, mm -hmm. clean. They're proud of me, right? When I get my candles, my sponsor brings the cake, right? So how am I going to look at that, this person and say, you know what, hey, you know, I'm with you guys today and I have been for however many days, but I, I you know, excuse my French, I really don't want to fucking do this anymore. Whatever the drug. My body is now chemically dependent. My mind is chemically dependent on a substance, so now I am not safe sober. But no one's teaching me that. No one's telling me that. They're telling me that once I get clean and sober because I've gone to a few meetings and I got a sponsor and everyone's clapping, yay. Okay, but no one's really asked me lately, am I? All right. I can think one way, feel one way, say one thing to you, and all three of them not line up. So in addiction, what we try to do is find our way of picking up our own bed and walking again. Death is the ultimate consequence of addiction. Jails, institutions, yeah, that kind of sucks, and homelessness and wandering around skid row, all bad, but death is the ultimate consequence that an addict pays. And the mind will make you quit pro quo until you get to the casket. But you guys in this room helped me more than anything to know that not only is my recovery alive today, but I'm not alone. Depression, loneliness, and anger, that baby boy. Because the addicts like to go in the corner and like my dog, he likes to lick himself and lick himself and be left the fuck alone. And that's what we like to do. Except we like a little cocaine or heroin with it. Addiction is just not true about you. Yeah. Crime is an addiction. Yeah. Crime and games it is addiction. A lot of people, it's just not about drugs. People are addicted to games. Because anything that you do over and over again, it becomes what? A lifestyle. Yeah. It's repetitive. My addiction started at 11, so the first time I did something, I fell in love. I'm not talking about with a woman. I'm talking about with the drug I was doing, right? Because it took away all that pain, all this. It took me to a fantasy, make-believe world where I was in the clouds, and I loved that feeling. Six years before going to prison that last time, I was homeless, right? I did things I never thought I would do. did it because, you know, I was out of my mind with the drugs. When I come here to work, I'm under the belief, my belief, that all these people are homeless because there's drugs involved, mental illness, and the drug bubble, right? And then I started to meet some people in my group. You see, my father used to load up shotguns and say he didn't kill the whole family. I remember times I was going to kill my own daddy. I, it, I, I remember times he used to walk on my mama and I was a little boy, I couldn't do shit. Me and my brother, we, we couldn't do nothing about the shit. You know what I mean? And that, that hurt us. Growing up, you learn to isolate. You don't, you learn to try to shield things off. 
because that's the way it is. You know, let everybody know your emotions and your feelings. You try to hide that. But behind closed doors, you hurt like hell. I mean, you, oh, you just don't know. It's a lot of pain. Still there. It's still there. But I'm learning to deal with it. See, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's a new day. See, becoming sober and stuff. It's still, you got to learn how to live all over again. You know what I mean? How to deal and cope with the drama and the pain that still comes. And you still, that's what I'm saying by fighting every day. Yeah. It's still there. You know what I mean? The past history, the past pain. Yeah, I mean, you look in the mirror, I see all these bullet holes. I, I, I see the stab wounds. I, from you, you just remember all the trauma and just everything you took your own self through. From five years old on, I started learning how to lie because I never told anybody what happened to me. So it stuffed and built and raged, right? And I would lie and I would steal and I wouldn't admit to nothing, right? But then after a while, you know, I'm doing drugs, but then I started selling a lot of drugs too and flooding this community with PCB. I started lying so much because of the stuff I'm doing that my lies became my truths. I mean, you do know what's wrong. But you don't know that the wrong thing became the right thing for a lot of us. It's all we know. So I am the, this is what I know. It's what I grew up in. At 11, I started to do drugs, sniffing first. It was as bad as any addiction I ever had. A year later, my mom puts my dad out, and I said, hell with it. I get involved in the game. Acceptance. What are the things that I have a hard time accepting. Who you are. And what are the are. things that I'm working on that I need to accept because it's still affecting me? Acceptance. Yeah. Accept, self. Uh, I'm working on self. Accept for who, uh, for who you are. I think inside I was crying because I couldn't come up with who I am. I didn't know Anthony. All I had was a question, well, who, who am I? Look at all the roles I played. I'm not them, but those are roles. Yeah. Who am I? It left me with a big old question mark. So it's a good one though, Anthony, when you don't. So when you say, when you say, Rob, I got to accept myself, but who is that, right? So I have to first start because along the way they started saying, what's important to you? And I says, you know, I got a son out there. You know what I mean? Who I love more than anybody. And they look at me. And they, they're soft. They're being soft. And they said, you do? I said, yeah. I said, I love him more than anything in the world. Are you sure? Do you love him more than your drugs? Oh, hell yeah. What, 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 what the hell are you talking about? I'm getting angry, man. What are you talking about? Of course I love my son. Are you sure? Eventually, I got to the point where I wrote my son. And, you know, I had to make, in, in making amends, telling him I'm sorry that I put, picked the drugs over him. Because the reality was my actions dictated what my truths were, you know? Just wanted to fit in, I guess you could say. With that, I became more use of alcohol and everything. Um, I became dependent on it. And it just took me through a, a world of changes, you know, in my life. Uh, through jail, through going to prison, through a lot of things. Uh, I guess you could say I was trying to fight just trying to find some some good out of it, which I wanted. You know, I, I didn't really want the life I was in, but I was stuck in it. Um, last year, on March of last year, I was shot seven times, and um, I guess you could say it kind of woke me up because God always been there, but I guess I had that wall where I couldn't accept Him in my life. Um, it's, well, since that happened, I, I guess it kind of opened my eyes towards where, where I was headed because I figured, you know, um, during my lifetime, I didn't care if I um, die or not, I guess. I'm 60 years old, and if you asked me 20 years or 30 years ago, would I end up on Skid Row? No one said no, no way. I didn't want to kill myself, but I was just had given up. I was tired. 
and I was sick. But I said, you know what? If I don't fight, who's gonna fight for me? And then me having the dog, uh, he's been through this journey with me. So I was on his behalf, I said, I have to fight. Uh, Loki, I'm gonna say number one, because I'm gonna say he's been through this journey with me, this whole entire journey. So, you know, his, he can't talk, but he can still communicate. And he knows when I'm feeling good, he knows when I'm not. He feels my emotion, he'll come lay his head on my chest. When I go outside, I look at people's face, their facial expressions, and I see a lot of hurt and pain. Or I just ask them, you know, I always ask how long you've been on Skid Row and what's your story. But a lot of people had jobs, work, you know, just different reasons. After serving 22 years in prison and going to jail when I was 15 years old, yeah. when I got out, the world was so fast. And my pride prevented me from asking for help. And when I start thinking like that, that's when I start putting myself in people's shoes and learning what it is to be a good person and changing the way I believe, you know? And I'm telling you, since I've been in the wine bar, my perspective on life has changed drastically in a positive way. But you know, I just want to say this too. When you become homeless, you really find out who is your friend. Mm -hmm. um, you know, friendship to me is not about when things are good. Friendship is when that your friend is going through something. That's when your friendship kicks in and you be that friend. No one really helped me, so I just say, you know what? I don't. I made it so far by myself. Yeah. Screw, no, screw that. That's how I feel. <laughs> you know, I'm not. I'm not mad at them. I, I forgive them, but I don't forget. I'm not ashamed of what has happened to me. That's why I want to tell my story. Coming through that, I, I um, realized that I had to change. If I want something good out of my life, I'm, I have to change. And it started with the way I think. It started with me, not just with us and alcohol. It, it's, it's me and what I feel inside the pain I have inside, which I still battle every day. Sometimes you have to forgive yourself to move on and forgive others with love. And, and make sure you go forgive them with love, not no hatred, not holding that to the side, not even towards yourself. And I think from that, freedom, freedom will come and peace of mind will come and you'll be able to move on. Right now, I got you to say I'm at peace with myself right now. Evil is learned. Good is learned. Bad behavior, good behavior is all learned. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what really life is about. It's not about worrying about death and worrying about, you know, all these other things that, that distracts us from being, you know, mothers, brothers, sisters, friends, and just a, a normal neighbor or co -worker. You understand what I'm saying? That's where my mind is at. That's where I want to be at. That's where I want to, that's how I want to live my life. And am I perfect? No. You know what I'm saying? And that's the beautiful thing about just being a human being is that we know everyone making mistakes. Don't judge unless you've been there. Um, unless you felt the pain that other people other people felt or feel. So do not judge um, because you don't know what nobody going through or been through. Um, I believe that some people can't even live the half of the life that we've been through and survive. You know, drugs ruin lives, right? right? Well, guess what? Drugs ruined that life. <laughs> I like that. The drugs took me off course. So they ruined that life. So it's not a bad thing. So in other words, the drugs saved me from that lifestyle. Even though it gave me hell for a long time, it saved me from that lifestyle. It's pretty interesting when I think of it that way, right?